Oh, I didn't see you there. The etymology of the word Pope, Old English Papa from the 9th century, from Church Latin Papa, Bishop Pope, in Classical Latin, Tudor, from Greek Papas, Patriarch, Bishop, originally Father, applied to bishops of Asia Minor and taken as a title by the Bishop of Alexandria in 250. In the Western Church, it applied especially to the Bishop of Rome since the time of Leo the Great and claimed exclusively by the Church since 1073, usually in English with a capital P. So, uh, do that. Watch Popes. Learn stuff. Only on churchmilitant.tv. Sign up for a premium account today. Churchmilitant.tv is not responsible for any feelings of extreme confusion, bewilderment, befuddlement, bamboozlement, or discombobulation that may occur while watching Popes with Joe Guy. Hello everyone, I'm Christine Niles. Simon Rafe is on vacation and Matt Pearson is in Rome covering the Synod. Today's Friday, October 10th, 2014. Here are your latest headlines from churchmilitant.tv news. Raymond Cardinal Burke is objecting to a married couple's talk of the Synod welcoming homosexuality. Handpicked to speak first, the Australian couple claimed marriage is primarily a sexual sacrament. They also said parents should welcome gay children and their partners into the family home to the applause of many bishops. Yesterday, Cardinal Burke strongly objected to this speech, citing the dangers of exposing children to an intrinsically disordered relationship. In his words, we should not give the impression to children that we, quote, condone gravely sinful acts on the part of a family member. Synod speeches should be made public, says a prominent cardinal. Objecting to the secrecy of synod discussions, Cardinal Gerhard Mueller told reporters, quote, these interventions should be published as before. All Christians have the right to be informed about interventions of their bishops. The Vatican is breaking with the tradition of publishing the talks in order to encourage bishops to speak freely. Mueller has been one of the strongest voices rejecting communion for the divorced and remarried. The University of Notre Dame is granting spousal benefits to gay couples. Just a week after the Supreme Court dismissed several gay marriage appeals, Notre Dame is claiming it will follow the relevant civil law and grant the benefits immediately. The university, however, has failed to cite exactly which law it's referring to. Professors are criticizing the decision, reminding the university of the directive from the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, which stated in 2003, quote, in those situations where homosexual unions have been legally recognized, clear and emphatic opposition is a duty. A woman diagnosed with terminal brain cancer plans to kill herself November 1st. The 29-year-old woman is recently married and was trying to have a child when she found out she was dying. She justifies her death by claiming, quote, my quality of life as I knew it would be gone. She moved to Oregon to take advantage of their state-assisted suicide laws. We ask that you please pray she would not follow through with her decision. A Pennsylvania couple who learned of their unborn child's fatal birth defect went against popular opinion and refused to abort him. Instead, they created a bucket list of activities to do with their unborn child, taking him to the zoo, concerts, and Phillies games. The boy was baptized after his birth and died shortly after. His father said, quote, one thing we would want people to take away is that each human life is so valuable and that it's important to live each day to its fullest potential. I'm Christine Niles. Those are your headlines from churchmilitant.tv. Please watch The Vortex today where Michael talks about the chickens coming home to roost in Rome. Thanks for tuning in today. Please share churchmilitant.tv news with your family and friends. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter and may God bless you. Hello everyone, Michael Voris here from churchmilitant.tv. Bishop Daniel Jenke of Peoria, Illinois has said, quote, we can no longer be Catholics by accident, but must be Catholics by conviction. Amen to him. The bishop is dead on. And that's exactly what we'll be talking about on Saturday, November 8th in Toronto, Canada. 
The event is called The Future of Catholicism and it's being hosted by the terrific apostolate Catholic Chapter House. I'll be joined by Tim Haynes, host of the hardest hitting Catholic podcast on the internet. We'll both be giving two talks each about the crisis in the church as well as the new evangelization. So come and enjoy the fellowship of hundreds of like-minded Catholics at this all-day event, which includes the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass and the Rosary. You'll also have the opportunity to engage with many outstanding Catholic organizations who will be present there as well. You can learn more or register today at catholicchapterhouse.com. You can see it right there on the screen. So we will see you in Toronto at the beginning of November. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.